All right, all right. Woo. Mm-hmm. We're ready to go. Audio is That'll good. make you Audio warm. Is good. Everybody <laughs> phone on vibrate. <laughs> yeah, it's true. All right, all right. This is the DDHD podcast, and we have, as usual, a very, very, very special guest today. Very. One of the most prolific comedians in the game. I would agree. Um, you probably saw him. You might have seen him in one of his amazing comedy skits on social media. You definitely follow him. I know that. For sure. Mm-hmm. You uh, probably saw him in one of his great specials, Straight Out of Jamaica, hey. who uh, had an amazing promotional video by none other Usain Bolt. You know, just dropping it in there you <laughs> know, with your with your nice, famous friends. Like and Flex. You might have seen him in a local comedy show, um, and you might see him soon on his Canadian comedy tour itself. We have none other than White Yardy. Let's yes, give it sir. up. Thank yes, you. sir. Yes, sir. Like I'm excited. That, that introduction is nice. <laughs> <laughs> we got some say, tequila. Yo, that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you got some tequila to warm you up. Might as well give you a good introduction. Yes, sir. Know? Yeah, yeah. How you Thank doing, you, man? man? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, man. Thank mm-hmm. you for having me on your podcast. No? Yeah, Thanks man. for appreciating it, man. No doubt. Got a lot of questions for you, man. I do. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. I know Juice is a big fan of yours. A huge fan, mm-hmm. man. I've been following you as a as a fellow foodie as well. Mm-hmm. To see you tear apart some people who can't cook Jeez. just brings joy to my heart, bro. <laughs> like honestly, you are just saving stomachs and meals across the world right now, you know. So thank Everything, you for that. Man. Yeah. We have to do. We have to put. You know, is I still am shocked to this day mm-hmm. that people still have the nerve to put certain things out on social media. Talk, like, talk the talk, man. No, like, me, I always say, like, social media need to have, like, you know, them filter out, like, them have ways of detective, detecting things that need censoring. They need to find ways to detect or to censor some people food by line. Mm. God, <laughs> it's embarrassing. But it, it makes for funny content, man, so, you know. Hey, and it surprises me, no matter how much years I've doing it, me still can't believe till to this day, me still can be surprised that's by true man what would you say the worst one was that you'd see like rank one that you see is like wow this person is really right. serious you see one where they where them say um wings barbecue wings right but that they, them barbecue wings they look like them 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 then got you a person and come out the other side <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> you know like you say it's a foodie right yeah so food half is like we eat with our eyes as well, you know. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. First, so when, when you go to a restaurant and you're ordering food, you it's sometimes it's the look alone that grabs you. You might see something look nice, but it don't taste nice. Right. So we get that. Yep. But they still have to look presentable. Mikia, I I personally cannot eat something that looks like it should be in a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. You cannot convince me, but it's nice though. It don't look good. <laughs> So tell me one of the worst uh, meals that you. What, what was one meal that you saw that you're like, I, I gotta talk about this, right? The- um, there was just the other day. There was one where one lady boiled some chicken and said she seasoned it. Oh, my oh God. yeah, I saw that video. And, and it came really out. The chicken came out whiter than <laughs> when he went in. It came out gray, <laughs> like the chicken come out gray, went, like gray. <laughs> Like a bad day, like terrible, mm. like mm. yo, waste, and that's another thing. Like people are wasting chicken, man. Like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, come on, man. gotta save the chickens, man. We have to, man. Chicken yeah, lives yeah. matter. Chicken lives matter. matter. It's fashion. Yeah, I me. Mean, exactly. Chicken lives matter, man. <laughs> so have you always had a passion for food since you were young? Not so really had a passion for it. It's just yeah. that, like, I love food, man. Like, I, I like eating good food. Mm. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And then obviously. I can cook. I'm not a chef, make mm-hmm. that very clear. But I can cook, you know what I mean? Like if, if some if we in a place together, like yeah, chill and man and say, Yo, we're hungry and we have the food in the kitchen, me cook, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Me, me not mind cooking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? So I know how certain things are meant to be done. Mm-hmm. Me know the correct way and what is not the correct way. I mean, know how things are supposed to look too. <laughs> mm, they all look right. <laughs> so yeah. You have a favorite meal? Oxtail still, uh, you mean? Uh, but I think you know it, it's starting to realize all that we get. Like it's like it's like that's tri- most Jamaicans say oxtail. It's good. Most, <laughs> but oxtail is definitely my favorite. But then it's very equal with steam fish as well. Ooh, yeah, come love steam fish. Come on, man. How's come the, on. How's the comparison between the oxtail in the UK versus Toronto, for example? Um. I don't think I've really had much oxtail being here. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And again, it's not really a comparison, guys. It's down to the chefs. Mm-hmm. Right. It's down to whoever's cooking that. Yeah. That's what I mean, because in the UK, you, you can go to many places and get oxtail. 
but it's not all gonna be the same not all gonna have the same so, some of them just stand out you know yeah, what i mean yeah, yeah. and then that becomes your regular so it's like i would only go to a certain spot or here or eat from certain people at cook mm. still same with like here once i find a spot like i know say yo that spot them had oxtail from them like it me know say yo them oxtail good can i as i said and everybody can do it you get me so very yeah. true yeah. very true man what is your relationship with usain Bo, man because you know oh. You know, Marwan mentioned it earlier, man, yeah, and yeah. that's like he's he's the guy, yo. Like he's yeah, the he's, guy, he's, man. You know, it's crazy. Are you guys cool or yeah, like? Like, like, we don't, we, like we will speak <coughs> occasionally on um mostly on social media and that via messaging and that. But he he's been following me for a minute now, like right. in my career, and um it's so crazy yeah, because I I was having this conversation with somebody before. I'm say yo, out of everybody who followed me on social media, when you see him, but followed me that one there felt more different like yo mm -hmm. this is a legend like a legend following me you get me like that that one that just made me feel raw like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, like i'm mean, gonna tell you there's a there's a two people who have uh, three people as a matter of fact who have followed me who me, gave me that feeling right vibes cartel Woo! when cartel hey when cartel Woo! follow me you know me have to, me have to say yo him and they are jail i know him follow me yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then me say yo me That's send a true. message yeah. yo world boss big up for the follow you know mm -hmm. the man send me a voice note so me confirm say it was him i'm say yo him say yo who are going white yardy <laughs> <laughs> the white daddy <laughs> yo but it's comedian in town yo he said boom hey yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that was then, me i would have sampled that yo that would have been my introduction or no something. me have it my screen record that, <laughs> that <have it. laughs> and then um drake wow yeah, drizzy yeah, the I, boy I, yeah and, and he's actually been following me for a long while yeah now. yeah like yeah. years he's been following me and um when you cause you even know where he's at now he's like yo he's he's the greatest eh? yeah, like yeah, in yeah, I, yeah. I know you some people are like oh you, you can't say that but no yeah, like when you, you think of what he's doing mm -hmm. still current still dominating the world in music and stuff like that it's like yo so those three there but you see him but one was always the biggest because it's like to me he's he's, he's a big icon and what he's done in the sport and everything right. and what he's done for jamaica right it's amazing so when he started following me he was like we, we speak every now and he would, he would watch a video and then he would comment and laugh and message me. I said, like, yo, that video is funny, Ray Ray. I love that. And then when he came up to my show, he was like, yo, I was like, I need to do, um, I want to make my show a bit different. So mm. I was advertising. I was like reaching out to um, people like to get, because even like Raheem Sterling. Yeah. He done a video for me for, um, for, I hope Raheem not see something like, so I'm not follow you too, you don't feel big, you don't feel, like, you feel like me big enough. So you tell your people, them turn off them. them. <laughs> Wait, the man who tell I me, know. the man who oh tell my me, God. the man who said, put your phones on vibrate, wow. did he even put feet on vibrate? Mr. Grams. Eh? Oh boy. Not even, I never even know him name. If I didn't know him name, I call out him name now. <laughs> Dwayne. And it's the Dave East striker still, so you got to go pop, pop, pop. Oh man. <laughs> so yeah, so when I was Anyways. doing <laughs> when, I was when, I, when I was doing the promo, I just reached out to him and said, yo, like, we can get, um, I just a short up video. And he done it. And he had Warren Weir with him at the same time because they were training. They wow. were just around the time. And they were, I think they were getting into the Olympics. It was 2016. So they were yeah. either champs or Olympics. Mm -hmm. Might have been Olympics, no? Was that the year? I, ca I can't remember. They switched it up now because of the yeah. pandemic. One right? of them, anyway. It was yeah, either yeah. they were going into the, the um, ch um, world champs or it was Olympics and they mm -hmm. were training. So they just did it for me. And yeah, man. So. That's dope, man. Yeah, That's yeah, dope, yeah. man. It's cool man. as well. Yo, man. I, I love Usain Bolt and what he's done worldwide and for Jamaica, period. Yeah, yeah. But I will say this, the restaurant needs some work still. You know mm. what I mean? They might one over here? No, I was oh. there in Jamaica to the one he went to and I wasn't... Oh, the tracks on record? Yeah. yeah. yeah they yeah, did yeah. open one in England as well, but it's not open no more. It's not open no more? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. tough to open up a restaurant yeah, yeah. over there. Yeah, yeah. It is, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. But you know, he, he um he's more the ambassador for them. Right. So it's like he's in partnership with other people. With yeah. It, so you know what I mean? But you, you're right. When you put your name to something, something you have to. Something, you have to. to yeah, and yeah, as yeah. somebody like, you know, I I used to work in a lot of kitchens as well, man. And that's how I learned to chef and whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, like a restaurant business, it's like you need to be involved in it. Fuck. Seven days a week. You can't just put your name on something. No, no, no. Even if you're just running it, you got to be on the line. You got to be taking come care on, of man, it, your man. Name, you know? That's your name, man. <laughs> man yeah. the first thing go wrong, them will come to you. You, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you cook the food, you yeah. know what I mean. So yeah, that's what's up. That's amazing, man. How's uh, 
how how does that feel when you you know that other people are kind of big following like big mm. celebrities are following does that mean that you're does it feel like a validation in your career that you're on the right path do you feel better or do you like oh this is cool you know i feel like early in my career i did i feel like early in my career i did but then over time you just realize like it's like you're on a similar path as well mm. you know what i mean and it's not to say like you're feeling like oh you're equal with some people because we have to understand there's different levels to everything you understand mm. but uh, it still is nice when you you get the, the likes and the comments from people yeah. of a certain st status Satria. yeah but i don't really look too much into it no more because for me for me it's like oh, it, they just follow you because they like your entertainment yeah, you know what i mean yeah it yeah, yeah. don't mean nothing else it's like yo kevin hart's wife has mm -hmm. been following me from when i had Five thousand followers. Oh wow! wow. Okay, you wow. understand wow. that is like yeah, yeah, that's yeah, just yeah, show you, yeah. but that's Kevin Hart's wife been following me. Yeah, has they done anything for my career? Mm. No, she. No. Is, is that I mean, like, it's so I, I don't look on it no more. Like, like they they following you for a reason, mm. you know? Like they just following you because of what you're mm -hmm. you're producing content and which they, they they like or they can uh, mm. um, relate to. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Have it's, you it's have cool. you have you reached out to to uh, I forget her name. Uh, starts with. Anika, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, 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 that. Maybe that, that you know, that, 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 too that door might not be closed, man. I know, but that too far, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 problem, yo. Too far, man. <laughs> next, next minute, shot, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. say, oh, Unfollow him, <laughs> block him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like Kevin out there. When you do see me in person, yeah, they want to talk to me. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah Try yeah. sliding yeah. my wife's DM. Do you, you know, remember what happened with um, Sean Paul and Beyonce? Do you know that story? No. About, uh, I might butcher it a little bit, but at the time when Beyonce had the record with Sean Paul, yeah, yeah. this is what I've heard, okay? Um, <clears throat> they were shooting the video together. Mm. Jay-Z was on set. And apparently, you know, Sean Paul that was at his height yeah, at that yeah, time, yeah. right? Working with Beyonce, everything. And apparently, at some point at the shoot, Beyonce came out to shoot her part in the video. And then Sean Paul said something like, Watch a girl about to look 14. Something like that. <laughs> and from that time, like, yo, Jay-Z was like, mm, okay. And you know, Jay don't play with that, yeah. man. And it was, I don't think they've ever made a song or anything yeah, like that since. ever again. That tour was done. And was he, there even a clip in that video where they were together in a shot? Yeah, I don't think yeah, so, yeah, man. I don't, I don't know. So. It, I don't it, think so. There was a rumor started after that video that, you know, they might have had a thing. Yeah. You know? yeah. Or, but it's, what she got angry for Sean Paul is that he never did it. it supposedly right. Like oh, right, right he let it you know keep going right. and to him mm -hmm. he's like yo i'm not saying it you know if anything it's adding to our publicity right yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. where the friction kind of started so you got to be careful yeah, you're yeah. right you're yeah. right you have yeah, to be yeah, careful yeah, yeah, so yeah. you're on Respect. the right path don't listen yeah, yeah. to juice don't don't <laughs> <laughs> you know just saying? check it man i don't uh, know let's i want to i wanted to ask you uh you know you're an artist as a whole because you started as a musician right before you um i used to i used to dj like mix okay you know what i mean and and talk on the microphone like um for my father's song but my real passion was music before so I used to, but I never DJed like I released anything professionally. Okay, it was always like just a hobby of mine, and right. even comedy was not something I wanted to do. It was more mm -hmm. music. Right. So even, and that's why throughout now I'm, I do a career, I still mess about with music, even mm -hmm. though I haven't really put anything out apart from one ever song I ever put out, yeah. and that yeah, was yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. You shot that video in Toronto too, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah I remember that. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was here on tour, was doing a show. It's like, yo. Shoot that real quick. Video. Yeah, yeah, we saw that. yeah, we shot the video. Love that, man. When you were Love DJing, that. Did, was that like a outlet for you to like, when you realized you liked events, you liked putting people together, you liked the presence of an audience? <laughs> so, growing up in Jamaica, like, dance hall is, is, um, is part of the culture, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. the dance hall, sound system, all of that's part of Jamaican culture. My father had a sound system. Mm -hmm. So, I was going around that from young. Mm -hmm. So, seeing that from young, just I was just into it more and more. I enjoyed it. And, you know, it just felt good. Like, yeah, you used to see the the the, the, beat, the, the professional ones. Mm -hmm. Like, I used to do it as a hobby more thing. Right. But you see the, the, the guys them that are, are selecting the sound and everything. And you see the, how the crowd move and yep. the guy upon the microphone. I tell them, for, everybody this, no one. What we say? And then my mate, it's like, it was, it felt the good energy. to see that, like, yeah. I would love to be able to do that as well. You know, like, right. have that, like, almost like a control to, you know, I'm going to, control this dance yes what i say goes yes. and that's it was a, it was a good feeling man so yeah do you have a favorite sound 
Favorite sound? Sound, yeah. My father's sound, Dan Pelico. <laughs> even, though, <laughs> even though we're not there on the road no more, but yeah. But, but hey, we got Vertex as well. Vertex sound. That's what's up. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out I can Vertex. definitely relate to that, man, because my dad didn't well he had a sound growing up and stuff yeah. but he was just like a lover of music, music yeah, you yeah. know and that's really what sparked my love of music mm-hmm. just waking up on a sunday morning and just you know music smelling the it. ackee and sawfish and you know what i'm saying and and just watching him play soul music and reggae music yeah, yeah, yeah. looking at his vinyl and looking at the covers and you know what i'm saying it really sparked my love for music but it, it, it's a, it, that's the thing with with us we know like when, when you especially in the jamaican community we, is that there's music always playing yeah always like music whatever whether it's reggae dancehall yeah whatever type of genre of what it is but you have it playing mm-hmm. roots ska all of that type oh, of stuff yeah. so dr- dr- even like the drum and bass stuff so some people play that um dub that dub- drum and bass um dubstep, dubstep yeah. and stuff like mm-hmm. that so you have all of this mm-hmm. and you we grew up hearing it yes it's like we know Weekend, the f- everyone not when the parents are not working, somebody I put on the radio, the stereo, mm-hmm. some music is playing in the house. Mm-hmm. And I mean, so you grow up hearing it. So music becomes a part of your life from young. Yeah. You're in a taxi music I play. Yeah, that's everywhere, that everywhere. everywhere. You walk down the road, every shop I play music. Yep. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, yep. You have a drive all like, you have a drive in a car yet and your music not on. Or, and you drive past all the bar and you hear the music and you say, yeah. Right about you, you. <laughs> 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 you reach the next, the next piece of song come back again. Big up you. Yeah, like it, it, music just always everywhere. Yeah. So everywhere. We, we, we can't hide from yeah, it. That's true. So that's why, it, like, if you really check it, a lot of car- I'm not gonna say Jamaican. I'm gonna like speak. I know some. I don't like speaking about Caribbean, but it's I don't always. Know, I don't know as much. As much here. as Jamaica, yeah. Jamaica, I can't speak on mm-hmm. to the fullest. So I know that a lot of Jamaicans, that's why they always want to do music. Yeah. Because we grow into it. And mm-hmm. music is a very big part of Jamaican culture because music puts, has put Jamaica on a map Whew. on the world bigger yeah. than what it is. So yeah, the small yeah. island is huger than what it is. Because mm-hmm. I always say Jamaica is like a big small island right mm-hmm. yeah the Check biggest it, small it's, it's island the biggest yep. small island mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. what yeah. bob marley did for that country yeah. is huge mm-hmm. to when you get to the when you're looking at like in places like thailand and all the, these places the symbol is used so much there right. to advertise things there you get me the so, influence man. worldwide is incredible yeah. for such a small place man to influence on, the man. world so Come on, man. in so many different ways you know what i mean so i, I can see, I, even I, like you saying about yeah when you saying about winning in the olympics and i'm like world boss <sighs> he's referencing vibes cartel yeah, music yeah, again yeah, yeah. so you understand mm-hmm. me so music yeah, is yeah. like the is so big for jamaica come yeah, on i mean even look at toronto it's like we're so influenced by yeah. Jamaican culture. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whole, but Jamaican specifically, our yeah. slang, the way we talk, the, even just the food. You have a jerk chicken spot on every corner because mm, yeah, we yeah. all love Jamaican food we and do. love yeah, the yeah, culture. Yeah. You guys have like a way of wanting to enjoy life mm-hmm. all the time. That's why we get along all, and half our team is Jamaican. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you guys just take over. You yeah. know? <laughs> the good times you take over for yeah, sure. Yeah. How was it growing up in Jamaica for you? Did you find that it shaped nice you? Nice man. Yeah. yeah, man. It, that that's that's the foundation. You yeah. know I mean, your 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 first early from your from young schooling all of that. That's your foundation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. who you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever comes after is building on top of it. You understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. But those basics there are your foundation. You're mm-hmm. learning in your early years. Yeah. You understand the basic yeah. things that you need in life. Yeah. Who you're gonna be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trust me. You, you start that you. You start see certain like the people start notice certain traits in you from young mm-hmm. to know what type of person you're gonna be when you grow up and stuff like that. Yeah, so you know yeah. what I mean. Um, so grew up in Jamaica was nice, man, and it's just to me, grew up in Jamaica I was, I grew up in the countryside. So yeah, you're from up, Black River, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. I didn't grow up in like the yeah. city areas yeah, and stuff yeah, like that, yeah. which is Kingston and Mobe. Yeah. You know what I mean? I grew up in the countryside. Right. So for me, countryside was nice. It's like free. It is nice. You're hungry, you climb two tree, pick some fruits and things Good. like that. Mm-hmm. You go fishing, catch two fish, you go fry your fish, them or whatever. Like that's how we used to live, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like we, we had places we never had to fear going into a different area because of other people. Right. It was not it was much more safe. Yeah, safe environment. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. I love that too. And I can relate to that too, because my dad is from Saint Elizabeth. Okay. Yeah, it's from Bosav. Oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So just going there and just seeing how the countryside lived and yeah, man. as a youth I can only really get to go there if there was 
a funeral. You know what I mean? Like that's usually when I would go and visit. But to see the amount of love that was there in that countryside and, you know, go to the night night and have a big party, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Go to Alligator Pond and swim yeah, and all of that yeah, stuff. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, that was blessed. That was blessed, man. I love it there. And the parties, man. Come mm. on, yo. Like, I don't there might not be a better party in the world than a dance hall party, yo. Like it's to me, nice, like, it's nice, man. It's just nice, yeah, yeah. entertaining. And every time, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Trust me, mm -hmm. fully. <laughs> did uh, did um, you start out a comedy in Jamaica? No, 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 no. no. It, it was in all the in the UK, UK right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How one. did that transition happen? The comedy? Yeah, like do you remember just the accident. the first show, yeah, the first jokes accident. landed? You know? Yeah, just accident, fully just accident. accident, eh? That's crazy. Fully accident. It, it started. As, um, it's just me going online doing some videos. Yeah ranting about things yeah. yeah and this was before the instagram videos as well mm -hmm. this was um the app the keek app hey, hey, keek, I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so i was on there and you know people just encouraged me to say yo are people saying to me try do stand up because your rants are funny mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're 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 very hilarious and you know we just went on stage and um i did it man I, um i reached out to a comedian called slim in the uk okay who we had mutual friends and he basically is like one of the big man them in comedy over there like really mm -hmm. like they cut like he's like the king for, for the uk mm -hmm. slim yeah slim mm -hmm. so um when he got me on stage it was like he you know he spoke to the comedy um the promoter of the um a regular sunday night comedy jam i just went there and um i did it and from i did it they were just happy with me and then they just kept calling me back and back and back again and again and so yeah, man, it was very good. Was it magic the first time? Like I remember my first time, I felt like it was magic, but then I looked at it, I was like, oh, I didn't do so well. Was it magic for you? Or? Um, you know what? Yeah, it went well. Yeah, I'll be first honest. Time. It did. It did. It did go well. Wow. Um, I learned over time how to how to ma learn to do things better, mm. but I feel like I went up there and I didn't have any high expectations. I was nervous, but you know what? I I just went up there and I and I delivered and. I thank God that it went to plan because, you know, tell a lie, two two weeks before, two weeks before I did I did the the, the comedy club, um, at my house it was uh, my me and my partner's anniversary, and we had about fifteen people around, and I call them all in the front room. I'm say yo, I'm gonna be a stand up comedian, and I'm gonna test it out, and they're like what? I'm say yes, I'm one perform to you guys now. And I performed to them first. So that's how my first, that was my first. That was your start. Time. Was in my front room. Right. With family and friends. That's wow. dope. And Tough if crowd? anybody, yeah, Kai, if anybody's going <laughs> to be honest with you, yeah, it's, gonna it's be your them. family and yeah, friends. 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. and they would like, whoa, like, this is good. You should do it. Yeah. So I, I had that, because I had that when I went on the mm. stage. I, I was ready. Give I kind of confidence. Yeah, it yeah. kind of gave me a bit more confidence to say, all right, this is, this is my first actual one, but did something so right. yeah right, right, right. it was good that's dope man yeah man that's dope were you still doing music at the time when you no uh, no no, no, no. Yeah. what yeah. were you working like did you have a regular job when you made this transition and stuff like that Boy. Like, were you hustling like what yeah, stuff hustling, you can't talk hustling, about hustling, <laughs> hustling just yeah hustling i was just hustling man. okay I mean, okay like, yeah street okay. life right <laughs> 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 Because I know it's hard for, you know, a lot of people to make that transition. They might be good at something, especially now you got all these platforms, the TikToks yeah. and whatever, you know what I mean? And I was doing a bit of both, if I'll be honest. I was hustling yeah, and I was doing delivery driving as well. Okay. So I was deliver doing delivery driving, but the, the the reason why I was doing delivery driving because it helped with the hustling. Uh, you understand? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it made sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but, two birds with one stone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But by doing comedy after a while, like even I'm... Um, First time coming to Canada when um, West bring me to Canada to do um, the Juice Cup. Shout out to West. Yeah, he, he said do the Juice <laughs> Cup, um, Africa versus West Indies. Mm -hmm. Bring me over to do that. I was even hustling at that time, so mm -hmm. it's like even the conversation me and him had was based on the fact like yo, because it, it, it was start. Me, I've said this story. I, I've, I've told it this a few times, but I've not said the other part to it. So like, what well, the real behind it what it was okay so even we was having a conversation yeah so mm -hmm. when when west was booking he was talking to the man my manager at the time but him and my manager weren't really agreeing on a fee okay you don't understand because yeah. it's, how this thing work is like you're new we don't really know you we're giving you opportunity to come canada on a big stage and perform you know what i mean it, you know this is what we can do yeah they, and but, then they use the 
the curse word we like to call exposure over yeah. here. <laughs> which is, <laughs> this is a lot of exposure for you, man. You know what yeah, no, you no, you're right. No, no, they do that. So yeah, then they do. that conversation was going on and it was taking too long, but my manager was dealing with it. So for me, it was like, I, I said to my manager, let me call Wes and speak to him myself. And I spoke to him, I said, yo, whatever. Let's just agree to this. And when we come, do my thing. Right. And if you're happy, you're happy. And if you like it, then we deal with me better. You get me? Yeah, man. And that was the conversation. But the reason why I had that approach is because I'm hustling. So to me, the the, the fee wasn't really a big thing. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah. like me, I make money already. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like the money I'm making is like, bro, like we argue about nothing really. Right, right, right. You, you want to do the work. I yeah. want to show you. So and when I came, do my thing. And since then, this is like eight, nine years. Look what we there now. How how do you feel about like you know what comedians should be getting paid, uh, like when you're starting or when you establish? Like, yeah, yeah. do you feel like because I, it's Maron's a comedian, he knows, man. Like, it's hard to start making some money. You got to do a lot of shows yeah, yeah. to prove yourself for a while. But if you actually are good, where does it come in that you should be getting paid money you deserve? Yeah, you see that that no, it's it's, it's, it's so crazy because all right. I personally believe, yeah, is that if you're putting on a show, mm -hmm. everybody should be getting paid. 100%. Because if you're you putting on a show, you're a promoter. If you put on a comedy show, you need comedians to perform. Mm -hmm. They're coming to do a job to paying customers, not free customers. They come in here to get paid. No, there is levels to everything. Like, if you book Kevin Hart and you book me, I'm not expecting to get the same as Kevin Hart. I'll be lucky if I'm even seeing half of what I'm seeing. You get me? I'll be lucky if I see even a pinch of what I'm seeing. You get me? Like, what I'm getting, he probably didn't even be like, what's that? You get me? Like, <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? So, so we're keeping it man. real. But it's like, if you're a newcomer and you're still trying to make a name for yourself and you are willing to do a show for expenses, that's cool. Yeah. But if you do do well, the promoter shouldn't come back to you and still expect the same deal. Right. You should be able to come back and bless you and say, you know what? You did well last time. I'm mm -hmm. going to put you on a show and I'm going to pay you this. You understand? Now, yeah. if you establish now and you know that you are hilarious, you are funny, right. that's different. You can start negotiating a fee. Right. Mm -hmm. If you are funny and you have a big following and people come out to see you, you're not negotiating your fee. You're telling your fee. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I mean? So there is levels to everything. So I would say to comedians out there, because they, they, there's older comedians who don't believe in that. They believe in that. I've been doing it for 20 years. I'm established. I'm funny. Right. My fee should be more than whoever's just starting. Mm -hmm. That's not the case because the guy who's just starting could be hilarious than you. He could be more up to date with you. He has a big following and he's, a, and he's selling out shows. So his fee is going to be more than yours because people should. people come out to see him. Right. You're only known in the comedy clubs where people see you perform. It's about widening your, your audience. Right. So if any comedian out there is doing it, it's like still try focus on your online presence as well. Build your own audience. Yes. So now you're bringing something to the table. You have leverage now. Yeah. Facts. Facts. I, I want... Sorry. You had a no, question? no, no. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, your content. Mm. How do you find this content? Do you edit it? Your, do you edit it yourself no. as well? What do you mean? Like you have that? a team like who no, like me. when you put it together? Yourself, you do everything yourself from the beginning. All the videos? Yeah, the videos there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah. That's dope, man. That's dope. But yeah. where do you find it, yo? Like, do people send it to you because yeah, yeah. they have a people big following now? Yeah, yeah. But I, even I, in the beginning, like, where are like, these videos? No, and you know what the funniest thing is? Here? Like, so, all right. I, I used to do skit videos as well. Yeah. I still do skit videos every now and then. Skit videos take more time to do because I have to actually plan it out in my head and then go and have time to film it, then edit it. It don't take too long, but it's still just finding the time to get around to doing it. Right. Also making sure you're in the right mind frame, the right energy to do it. Because right. I've, I've done videos before, edit them and everything. I'm watch it back and I say, yo, I'm going to look so dead in another video. Right, delete. Delete wow. that, yeah, man. and I've done that before yeah. because yeah. I I know that it's not gonna be delivered the same way how I can deliver it. Um, I've done roasting videos when I used to I used to roast a lot of celebrities as well, like Nicki Minaj. I've roasted her before Black China, <laughs> yeah. like for the the foolishness <laughs> they do. I, I used to do these things, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. and then I, then the food ones started to come about accidentally where. There would be food pictures online that going viral. And I'm like, no, like I'm not talk about this. Mm. So, so now it's got to a stage where people send me so much. People tag me and stuff. Right. Like, so I, I literally have loads there, 
it's just again finding the energy to do a video to do it, yeah that's all it is yeah. because you, you I'm, I'm contracted to do videos every sunday oh really yeah but, but um well, it's not say contracted as much because it's, it's kind of live away, but i'm jamaica valley is a seasoning company yes i work very close with them it's kind of like mine with them as well but jamaica valley is a seasoning company yes 100 jamaica and 100 everything comes from jamaica ship uh, the ship they do it here in canada as well so mm. they, they, you can get it here in canada they do all the seasonings they do milk coconut milk condensed milk vanilla they do everything 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 fully oh. jamaican oh. and um how the because are the they distributing in canada as well yeah yeah they distribute okay. here as well sure. um yeah, yeah. they have a, i think they're in um ashwa there's a store in ashwa i think they have ashwa mm -hmm. yeah two two sister limited or something like that right so, yeah mm, um no. but yeah so they reached out to me a couple of years ago and said yo like we want you to be an ambassador for us and so on so we've been discussing moving forward and then now full time deal with them like fully like family you get me um yeah. and the deal is like as well like i make sure i talk about them all the time post yeah. about them yeah. but every sunday there's some sundays <laughs> i i've done a show the night before right i'm driving back home or flying back home it's like not in the vibes <laughs> definitely not in <laughs> no the vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you get me obviously yeah. as i said that like, because i'm working with them so it, like i in a way i can say it's my company as well yeah. so it gives me a bit more like i can say yo i'm not dropping the video today mm -hmm. not in the mood tomorrow mm -hmm. and they're cool like that because right. they know like i do it yeah but again it's being in the mood to do mm -hmm. these videos mm -hmm. so do you have like a a mandate for yourself i know sunday is a day but are you trying to get out you know seven videos a week or just one a week mm -hmm. or like do you not really no i mean i've not really schedule no i don't i don't really schedule like for say yo this week we need to drop a video today tomorrow i don't do that yeah some days i if i'm in a mood if some days i'm in a good mood mm -hmm. me fly out our three video but me put me keep back one or two okay come as like yeah see if these fit <laughs> when, when, next week yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and which is not a bad idea you know what i mean like oh. if so if i'm ever in the mood and i have the time right i will do as many videos as i can just change the outfits them you know what i mean right <laughs> <laughs> like, like it is that no yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah like i would just have them because that that's a good way to go forward right. the problem is is sometimes like the reason like if you if it's a hot topic one comes out or something part, you jump like, on it yeah if we could jump on that yeah. one that's the only time but i don't mind them ones it's when something's trending yes i don't mind grabbing it because it's trending now and, and like it, it's almost like a little boost to say yo may I go keep my, you see me? yeah man <laughs> but then there's times where i have done this before where there has been a trending so topic and i have low i have because uh, over time obviously every nothing's original nothing's original even if you feel like you've the first person to do something it's true it's man. been done before nothing new under the sun exactly so there's other people out there who do similar videos to what i do similar food videos and some of them go very hard like they would drop a uh, hundred videos a day mm. which to me is just dumb because that doesn't make sense it's gonna ask there's only that, so yeah. much you can set about the food you understand true. before it gets a bit dry true you understand <laughs> what i mean yeah. like you no, know, yeah. like it be real no, like, you can't put out a hundred videos but you know and the worst thing is when it's crazy because when all these guys do their videos people send them to me mm. it's like yo check out my it. stuff yeah, yeah no yeah, no yeah. not them like people follow me you say oh, oh are they will tag me in it and yeah. i'm like yeah, it's cool but there's times when there's been viral videos of something or a, a picture that's gone crazy and all these other guys would do a video but then when me drop mine like me wait till all three day pass make everybody say what you want say get out where you want get out so i'm <laughs> drop my one it pass for them one because mm. it is like because he's it's white yadi bro <laughs> they ain't white yadi yo noise. come on man yeah. The yeah. The prince? Yeah. Hey, drop, the drop something different yeah. yeah man but yeah i love that how was uh because I, I i know like a lot of your videos are viral i was talking about it with alicia and she was talking about like how everybody in her family just passes around your video yeah, and yeah, how yeah. it becomes so viral just sharing amongst your community yeah do you feel like you've given a voice and a different perspectives for jamaicans and people of the caribbean is, nationality yeah you know it's, it's not says given given in any way like but i feel like what i'm doing jamaicans feel proud about it because mm. i'm defending jamaica a lot of the time in things so if you do something that i feel if if i if i see somebody who is non-jamaican doing something right. that doesn't represent the culture in the right way i have a platform and a voice mm. it's different when you only have your one person with only your friend that's on whatsapp listening to you every day mm -hmm. you, that's where the conversation is finished between you two right yeah. but when right. somebody has a platform and is a public figure and you are willing to whether it's going to jeopardize something for you step out and speak out 
the people will respect you for that. You understand yeah, what I mean? And I do real. it from a place from my heart. You get me? I don't do mm-hmm. it. I don't do it for the likes and other, and, and things like that. Because you see, there's something what you just said as well is that viral, but there's also the WhatsApp. Yes. Mm-hmm. Nobody yes. monitors WhatsApp. Right. But guess what? Like people who follow me. Their grandparents like my stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah. Their grandparents are not on Instagram and stuff like that. No, but so they will share the videos. Yeah. That's it. You would see the video and laugh. I'm like, I'll send it to my mama, yeah, auntie, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you family send groups, it. Yeah. And I've seen this like that. When I realized about it, it was a couple of years ago, this elderly lady stopped me in the UK. She's like, I love all your videos. Uh, I watch you on WhatsApp all the time. I'm like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> you mean Instagram? She's like, no, WhatsApp, WhatsApp. She's like, I'm. You have my number. <laughs> She's like, no, no. My son sends me them all right. the time. I was like, oh. Yeah. So then I realized that there's WhatsApp. Like I even knew there was a there was a WhatsApp group with the whole of the OVO in there and unruly. Right. Camp. And my videos were in there just floating about floating because about. some of the most of the OVO people follow me as yeah. well. You get me? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, like no. it happens. And then with the with the with the virus stuff, sometimes people watch you because I'm on Facebook as well, not mm. just Instagram. Yeah. I'm on, I'm on my Facebook is actually you everywhere. Why yard is everywhere? But my Facebook is actually bigger than my um, Instagram. I believe yeah, that. Yeah. I believe you understand? that. Yeah, that's yeah. I, there's, a, there's a different di- um, the, demographic. The, exactly. Mm-hmm. And you know, we, we just have to keep everybody happy, man. That's amazing. What bro. would you say your demographic is? Because I feel like it could be from 18 to yeah. 75. Yo, you know what I mean? No, it's, you're correct. You're very correct. And, it could, and it's even lower than that. As right, well. right. It's down to kids. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Because... Like, mm-hmm. I, I I've seen situations even back in the UK, um, the gym that I go to, mm-hmm. and there was this PT new just came to the gym, start working out, and one day he came and spoke to me after about four weeks, and he was like, "Bro, I love your videos, you know. I like I, I always see your work, I don't want to bother you. I like because I'm I'm a PT and I know what it can be like, but I love your videos. I be, I was watching you before, um, I, I, when I was in high school, and my mother used to watch your videos all the time as well. So that's a that's a big difference. Big. That's a, you understand what I mean? Yeah, man. So just like when you say you would watch my videos, yeah. but then your mother would watch your, you understand what I mean? Yeah, so it's my, huge. My yeah, I think it starts from young all the way up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was just uh, how I wanted to ask you about you how you write your content, how you write your jokes. You know, and are you a writer or do you just put no, like stuff write. in your phone and you yeah. talk about it later? I don't, right? Yeah, yeah, Jay-Z yeah. a comedy, yeah, man. Yeah. You just go there's to the mic and start spitting. Yeah. Yeah, 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 there's two ways I do it. I literally will go on stage and just start talking. Just start about talking. Things. And even, uh, I've done it a few times. Yeah, I've done yeah. it. I've done no it a script. Few times. Just walk up in there. Yeah. <laughs> hundreds of people. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear, like, some, I've wow. been, like, and it just, it's whatever comes to my mind at the time. I'm, and right. I'm, uh, it's a risk but sometimes mm. you, if you believe in yourself you can do it you, you trust me? your gut though the best yeah. stuff comes from you that's gut, true right? that's true that's why with the food as well you have to mm. trust your gut yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of writing yeah. I do write bullet points bullet sometimes points, yeah. right. so like if we had a conversation and something triggered off something mm-hmm. I'd write two or three lines and um, words but I know that they I when I look back on it I, I will know how to make it work out. Yeah, you understand yeah, what I mean? So yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. the same. I can't I can't write. And yeah. I, I just I just memorize almost like what I think I'm gonna say and yeah. then I just say it. But it's weird. Like I find it slows me down when I'm writing. Do you have you ever tried it? No, I, I I'll tell you, I have I have written I have written twice. I've written twice, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you how it worked, yeah. Watch the door. The the first time I actually like re- wrote my set was when I did Straight Outta Jamaica, okay. my first ever comedy special. Right. And that's because I had to do it because I we were filming it um, with proper production and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And they wanted me. But I'll actually tell you, like, they wrote it down. Okay. Mm. I was just saying it. Right. Just writing yeah. it. Mm. Yeah, and You're like a prophet. And you know they gave it, but when they gave it to me, I was like, yeah, cool. I didn't read it because <laughs> I know what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 but yeah. then when I did Talk My Mind, my second um, hour of special, mm-hmm. I remember, yeah, I was telling my partner, my wife, what I'm gonna um, what my jokes I'm gonna do, and I was showing her some clips of my jokes, mm. and she looked at me. I was like, "No, no, that's yeah. not it. That's not it." And yeah. leave you me. This was in the night. This was like 10, 11 p.m. at night. We we're going to bed and everything, and I showed her. And I was like, yeah. I couldn't go sleep. I got up, I grabbed my notebook, and went upstairs, and I wrote my thought, my mind. Mm-hmm. It's jokes and stuff I had in my head, bullet points I had in my phone. Yes, and I wrote it in about three hours. And that was it. I put that book Damn. down and I went. I tested out once. It worked. Yeah. And that was it. That was it, eh? This sh- tour that I'm on now, yeah, um, yeah. the new one, are we done yet? Again, I had all the stuff in my head. 
and I, and I just wrote it down like lines, 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 lines. And that was it, just to get it out. Yeah. So it's like saying it out loud, but just writing right it at the same time. So that's the only times I've okay. done it. But more time my jokes are f literally freestyles. Mm -hmm. Has your has Easy. your writing or your jokes been the same since you started where you like speak about personal experience or did it develop into be the what boat. it is today? Be the boat. So like um one thing with me as a comedian, I, I I try to make sure most of my jokes are about myself. Okay. Because then nobody can be offended. That's true. Do you understand what I mean? That's true. <laughs> the only people can be offended with my material is my family. Right. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they, they are part of my life. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, uh, well, you signed up to this. So, yeah. Hey, <laughs> Sorry. You know I mean, like, what are you, you going to do? Sue me? You're going to cancel me? <laughs> <laughs> I have to see you at Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, I speak about family. Um, I do speak about myself. I try not to speak about too much political yeah, things. Yeah, stay away from that stuff. Yeah, right. yeah so, c c because it bec you, c you can go into a place where then it just goes left for you. Mm. Because you have to remember the audience, when you deal with political um, issues as well, the audience is different. Not yeah, everyone yeah. agrees with you. That's 100%. right. Yeah. So you're starting to speak about something and then all of a minute you, you turn into a big conference with people mm -hmm. in, the, in the comedy club. It's like, what's going on, sir? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just let me tell my joke now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so, but I do speak about relationships. I do speak about um, appearances as mm -hmm. well sometimes. Right. I do, I, I, so I do that as well. Mm -hmm. right. But majority of the time, it's about me. That's dope, man. So this is the Dreams Don't Have Deadlines podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And we're here to basically motivate and inspire people who yeah. might be on a path of entrepreneurship, um, hustling, doing their thing, whether it be comedy, music, sports, whatever it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we want to talk to people. Our community is a, a people who have been through some stuff, maybe had some success and then fell off, you know, or had, or had hard times and then still been able to persevere through that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, like, talk to the people them about, or have you actually ever gone through a time where you wanted to quit? Mm -hmm. Where you thought this wasn't for you anymore. Yep. You know what I mean? I and have. and gone through that and persevered? Yeah, man. Yeah. Like um during lockdown, man, that was it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I was I was ready to say done. Like and even even before lockdown, I was as well. Because you know it is um I've been doing this now ten years. Woo. Right? And I've I've done so much yeah. in these ten years. Yeah. I've 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 accomplished what a lot of other comedians have not even close to doing yet do you know how many pieces of content you've put out in terms if of specials would, in, I, 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 well, in, when videos online video, yeah yeah yeah. <sighs> if you could round it I out i don't know maybe, must be five thousand maybe more <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. But even that like but i'm talking in terms of even the comedy stand-up okay mm. I, I know like i have had over four or five hours worth of material mm. solid material mm. on stage can perform and you know i've toured canada this three times now i'm doing it i've toured england many times mm -hmm. you know what i mean like mm -hmm. i've been to america a few times mm -hmm. but it's like it always feels like every year it's the same again mm -hmm. it's the same again mm -hmm. it's like yo when man i get the next level now and that's because the doors are not being open in the right places do you understand like i i believe i should have had a netflix special by now i agree man i believe even amazon prime i should have had something on there by now you know what I mean? All these different type of things. Like Maybe I to see. make a call for you, bro. I'll do that. Yeah, facts. <laughs> Yo, you think I joke? I'm not afraid to say that. Yo, facts. But no, it's like, you know, and I just get to a stage where when you see other comedians get certain things and you think, what's going on here? Yeah, why him? What me I do wrong? Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. And it's like, it don't make sense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it can become very disheartened and make you feel like, yo, I'm done with this now. Right. I don't want to do this no more. So right. during lockdown, I was like, I, I went through creative blocks. Mm. There was times I was like, yo, we haven't done comedy for a long time. What's going to happen when I come, come out? Back, what yeah. am I going to talk about? Oh, yeah. Yo, isn't my, am I still funny? Like, mm -hmm. yo, like, which jokes work? You know what I mean? So all this stuff used to happen where I used to want to stop, but I have family. You know what I mean? I have children and my children are my biggest inspiration. Mm. Yeah, I mean, cause I always believe that no child has asked to be on this earth. You understand? So you as an adult, once you're a parent, you have a responsibility. Regardless of what you're going through, your child cannot suffer because of you. 
you brought them into this world. Facts. So I use them to motivate me to keep going all the time. I love that. Mm. So, yeah, I love man. that. I love that. And now look what you're doing right now. You're out here killing them back yeah, in Canada. Yeah, yeah, back yeah, on yeah. road, yo. Yeah. You're not done yet. That's not, not even done. a question, yo. Uh, Are we done yet? No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> How was it Why coming I, up in the comedy scene, man? Like you, you, you were in the UK comedy scene yeah, for a yeah. long time, and then you started transitioning over here and growing your fan base. But was it rough? You know, the first few years, did you find it was a good elevation? Like, what were the hard times? There? You know, and before you answer that, would you like some more of this eighteen hundred no, tequila, sir? No, thank you for the eighteen hundred tequila, right. sir. <laughs> 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 oh, I said, that hey. Hey. <laughs> and he's actually strong. Yeah. <laughs> hey, more trees. <laughs> <laughs> you're not drive though no 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 okay today. all right <laughs> no it's all good. you got a team here to carry you after yeah we got you man we got yeah. you <laughs> all right um yeah coming up in the comedy scene like i said um i think my my transition was very different to the 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 traditional way mm. right but you have to understand we're moving in times things are changing mm -hmm. it's like um it's like if you took 20 years to get to the top of your game it doesn't mean the next person has to take 20 years. Facts. It doesn't mean the person after you have to take the same time as you. So if it takes me five years to get to the top, you come along, it might take you one year. It might take you six months. It might take you just a week because something happened. Mm -hmm. We're living in a, a time and, gener and, and, and this generation with social media is just there to the world now. So it's like before, before social media, comedy was like, all right, you have to go around and do your do do your time on the sets of the circuits you have to go to all the hot spots every little comedy club the box rooms the big rooms whatever right. rooms right. you have to go and put your name down you have to know that you go into a comedy spot and you say yo i want five minutes all right we'll see what we can do and you mm. might not get on right you have to go through all of that you understand it doesn't mean your struggle and my struggle are not struggles they are struggles right. mm -hmm. you understand what i mean it's just different times of it so i came into the game i was having a following i had a following on social media when I first did my first ever come, I didn't. Where well, it was when I did after I did the show that I was telling you about earlier, the re regular Sunday comedy club. Yep, I did it. The guy said, "Yo, you're funny. I want you to come back in two weeks' time." Went back in two weeks' time, did it again. He called me like three weeks later and said, "Yo, can you come down this Sunday?" Sorry, right, cool. I went and did it again. So after that, I was like, "Yo, something alright, yes, sir." Come just I go do the show them. So me call Slim, the comedian that, that hooked me up with yep, the show. Yep. I'ma say to him, say, yo, how much free show am I supposed to do before me get paid? <laughs> <laughs> him say you're supposed to only do about two. <laughs> so alright, then get to it with one, but it's how it goes. So <laughs> so from there I because because what it was is that I had a following. So every time I'm telling people I'm gonna be at the comedy spot, people are coming there. Right. So they were getting more and more audience, and I'm realizing because after the show, you're selling tickets, man, bro. And Come after on. the show, the comedians that were on the show, no one would go up to them and take pictures. Everyone was come to me to take pictures. So I realized there's something happening here. So I used to say to the promoters, "Yo, I want this fee." And it wasn't like I was asking for look. Yeah, some astronomical. I was just asking yeah. for something what I thought was reasonable and what was my worth at the time. Mm -hmm. The promoters didn't want to pay me that. Hmm. The promoter, what the promoters told me is that. They pay per, um, comedians based on um, guarantee they know you're going to laugh um, and bums on seats. Right. So when he said that to me, I said, all right, cool. No worries. Don't pay me. Mm -hmm. I stepped away and I said, I'm going to put on my own shows. With about 5,000 followers, I put on my first ever show. Dope. We had 300. No, we, we had 300 um, tickets sold. We had to postpone the show. Mm. Cause my father passed away the day oh, before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we had Sorry. to put out. No, it's cool. Mm -hmm. And then we postponed it to the following month. Same amount of numbers. We start doing it every Sunday. I started to travel around the UK and do shows. Wow! Yeah. So my following, because I had a following, I I took a different route into comedy, which other people wouldn't have to do mm -hmm. and it's shown it's, it's now allowed for other people to follow that same pattern now because the blueprints are already there now you just have to make sure you're, you're doing that love that obviously i can perform not everybody mm -hmm. with a following can go on stage and perform yeah, yeah they might be funny online but in real life on big stage, difference it's big very difference. different the audience is there there ain't big no difference. lols <laughs> <laughs> there's no smiley yeah, faces yeah, yeah, no fire yeah, emojis yeah, yeah. <laughs> real faces yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's dope man so that propelled your following in stand up doing all those weekly shows across yeah the man and, then, and that was my journey into it so and then um 
I mean, there was fights. There was fight. In everything mm-hmm. you got, you have fight. You had comedians that the older comedians didn't like that mm-hmm. because it's not the traditional way. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't like that you were more popular than them. Mm-hmm. They don't like that all of a sudden you become you've skipped from a, a opener to a headline and all mm-hmm. you know and all this the, these are the conversations that were being had yeah. without me there right. but i would hear it back anyway mm-hmm. but i just use that as more fuel to keep going mm-hmm. you get me i love that so i mean i just kept on pushing on pushing on mm-hmm. and I love that. you know i mean you lose people friends following the way, suit but now that's how it goes. yeah mm-hmm, it, no mm-hmm. but that's the way facts yeah so yeah, yeah. and the blueprint set and then there'll be people who come after me who won't have to do that much work now because it's already there to see that this is a formula there mm-hmm. if you stick if you if you try this formula you possibly can exceed you get yeah, me yeah man that's the Fire, blueprint man. man i know we got uh i mean i could talk to you forever bro honestly yeah. man, i love your energy Respect, what man. you're doing man I, I wish you nothing but success but we got a few questions and i just wanted to bring it back to uh what you said about family i thought that was so prolific man like you know but how do you balance a family life with the comedy life being on road a lot mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying being away from your family trying to balance that uh how do you have any tips for any other comedians doing it out there uh, yeah man yeah. I, you know i i feel it's something you learn over time you know what i mean mm-hmm. like you learn you learn this over time of how to deal with it mm-hmm. it's hard mm-hmm. don't get me wrong it's hard being away from your family yo like me have me have um, a son and a daughter as well you know right. what i mean i'm a wife so it's like mm-hmm. My my daughter's five. Oof. Yeah, my Oof. my son's fifteen. Okay. So he's 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 into his last year of um se- secondary school, school, high school. Yeah, yeah. You understand? My daughter's still in the beginning stages of school, but mm-hmm. she's going through they they they're going through so much things, and being aware, you miss certain things that you won't. You know, normally, I know we got technology, you have FaceTime and all this stuff. Yeah. It's still not the yeah. same as right. being there physically for them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like because I know my reasons for doing what I'm doing, my purpose, they are a part of that. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's certain sacrifices that you will make, but you know that you're trying to do this to make sure they have a better life. That's mm-hmm. right. Because you don't want them to have to go through certain struggles you went through. Right. You understand? Yes, so sir. that's how I deal with it. I just have to know, say, you know what, like me and their mother sit and speak, mm-hmm. we communicate, we make sure we talk. Right. We're very supportive. She's very supportive of yeah. me. She mm-hmm. understands that, yo, this is for the benefit of the family. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you have to go away for six weeks, we get it. Right. It's work. Yeah. You understand? Yep. So, yeah, man, we just, you have to have, uh, it's hard. It's, there's no right answers to how you can deal with it. Mm-hmm. You just have to find what makes you can deal with it, your personal, yeah. yourself. I think, I think you nailed it when you said the, the communication. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, a lot of people, they might just kind of do their thing and maybe expect that it's going to be okay or the kids will understand or yeah. maybe they're too young to get it right now or, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But, like, if you can have the talks, I mean, having a five-year-old and wondering, like, where's daddy going and, you know, yeah, yeah, have yeah. a nine-year-old too and now he's starting to ask questions, it's like, but why do you have to go overseas? You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, why do you yeah. have to leave so yeah. often? You know, you but why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Trust but me, when you break know. it down, yeah, yeah. And they will appreciate it. And they will. I, I believe that. I believe that. Man. But how daddy be home for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> how does, uh, how does why you already deal with the haters? Woo. Early white yardie and late white yardie are two, <laughs> two different people. <laughs> yeah. Tell us both. Tell us both. Early white yardie would literally, yeah, we, I would be going back at them. Until yeah. you know, what I mean, like, let's, let's, you like, respond to everything. Yeah, like, I used to respond. Like, mm-hmm. I used to, especially trolls online. I would I You'd continue engage. back mm-hmm. with them, mm-hmm. back with them. Like, and even people in real life that would hate confront them. Like, yo, so yes, you know, you understand? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get me? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. people's energies are different. Right. So the people energy online compared to in person are very different. My energy online and in person is the same. Mm-hmm. You understand? Later, now me over the last couple of years. Just ignore it. Right. Just ignore it. Right. Ignore it. And what I do is like, you know, you used to like, like bef- before I used to sometimes block people as well. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, yeah, nothing. I, I, no, I went through the tradition, um, the transition at first. I would get back at them. Then I got to the place where I just blocked them. Right. Then I got to the stage of, I don't even block you now. Just mm-hmm. ignore it. Stay and keep watching. Ah, yeah. that's what I do. Because <laughs> yeah. when about. you block, when it is, you know, it's like I learned. I learned over time that like every time you reply to somebody who says something bad about you, yeah, you're giving them time and, and energy. Yep. The people mm-hmm. who are commenting to you and saying, "Yo, we love your video. We love your music. We love what you're doing. You love this." You don't comment back to them. So when mm-hmm. they see you comment back to a, a negative comment, they say, "Oh, you love negativity." Yeah. Let okay, me do some so more I'm a, yeah, so I should stop praising you and say you're funny and say, oh, you're not yeah. funny. Mm-hmm. Then I will get a reply from mm-hmm. White Yardie. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
Mm. So you, you have to think about the people who are showing you love. You get more love than you get hate. That's Facts. So why you let Facts. one little hater go? No. So then I went to blocking them. But then I realized by blocking them, they know they're blocked. Right. So they know that you're affected by mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So I got to a stage now where I don't even look for them. I don't mm. even see them. Mm-hmm. I just ignore them. I'm and a, you I'm can continue you, to watch me. Yeah, next time I got haters, I'm going to call you. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you about the state of comedy today. Mm. You know, um, we're living in a very sensitive time. Yeah, man. You know? Careful, man. And Dave even Chappelle. in the last uh, SNL monologue, you saw Dave Chappelle. And now, yeah. you know, a lot of people are talking. And Dave loves to push the agenda to, to see how far it goes. But he does it brilliantly. Um, but there is a topic of, like, what are you allowed to say and what you aren't allowed to say. Some people are like comedians have a certain thing they can only say and that's it and some people are like no this is an art form yeah. they should be able to express what they want what yeah. are your thoughts on my it? my thoughts on it is that we should be able to say whatever we want long as it's not in a hateful way mm-hmm. right? that's how i feel like we should be like we should be able to like long as you're not like being racist long as you're not being harmful towards somebody and not pushing anything in a bad light to them it's cool you should be able to make fun life like, if, if you want to make a joke about a gay situation Mm -hmm. you should be able to speak about it but Mm -hmm. even just sometime even being on stage and you just say say gay you feel already Mm -hmm. that your back's against the wall yeah Mm -hmm. yeah did i am i am i gonna get away with this you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so it's like it's it's it's, i feel like we should edit that yeah even on this podcast like i'm I'm scared (laughs) already when you said it i I feel like it's it's got to a stage where we 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 are very limited in what we can do and it's because of we know like social media that's what the reason you know, is social media. Right. So people at shows they will film something. You might say it, everyone laughs in there, but that one person puts it out to the world and the world sees it and somebody offended one place now makes a video. And then that's where it starts. Mm-hmm. So you know what I mean? Like in a comedy club should be a sacred place where we can be able to express ourselves mm-hmm. in many Definitely ways. Was. We should be able to talk about however we feel, not in a rude or did whatever I'm dyslexic, I feel <laughs> like a um Rude? The aggregative way. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. Like we should yeah, be yeah. able to sp- to just make fun of certain situations, mm-hmm. and it just be laughed about because it's not that serious. Yeah. But yeah. that's why it brings me back to what I said. I mostly speak about myself. Yeah. Because if I speak about myself, I cannot offend anybody easily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. And with with Dave Chappelle, I feel like Dave Chappelle is at a place in his career where he don't really care now. Right. Yeah. Like if you if if he not get another show again, does he care? No. Probably. He, probably might, he, might, he probably want to end his career. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right now he's probably thinking like, I, I, I don't want to do comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I keep doing it. Yeah. Why can't you guys cancel me now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I'm already paid, but yeah. they keep throwing money at me, so oh, I'm going to keep hey. doing it. Yeah. Facts, man. Yeah. Facts. How, uh, how important is it to have a team that you trust in your career? You should you ask Wes that, man. Yeah. Like, yo, what's it like working with this guy over here? And uh, Well, uh, it's been a very interesting experience from the first time we met with um, me kind of button up his manager and then him <laughs> reaching out to me and us connecting on that level yeah um but i think that the best part about him and, him and my relationship is where we became friends before we really got into like the management situation mm-hmm. so we we're able to talk about things he gave me like even the first show that he came to do for me he gave me a lot of suggestions as to what i should do with my shows yeah and it's been like uh helping each other as friends mm-hmm. and then building together in business mm-hmm. and then he adopted a lot of my team i connected with his people in in the uk our families are, are, are like, I'm close to his family. He knows all mine. So yeah, yeah. the team kind of just, it's more like a family thing, to be honest. I love that, man. I, I, I Somebody thought you were going to look like Quavo. You think <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a Quavo. There's no camera on me, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you already trying to get us canceled before we even pop off? <laughs> Just like Quavo, though. Yeah, man. Got a vibe. Got a vibe. Have you, been, yeah. have you been in the comedy business for a long time? Uh, it's around the same time around as him. Same so time? we've been, we'd been okay. in, what, like about 12 years now? Mm-hmm. Okay, so he, he was like a big motivation for you to get into it? Um, it was it was it was the, the working with him and some of the people at that time was what propelled me to take comedy from like a small hobby side thing to like my full time job. Got yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. That's amazing. Man. I thought. I mean, he w- he didn't give us the real answer. I know there's some diva and white yadi. Like he just <laughs> 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 he's like this nope. guy needs his yellow M and M's only. Nope. No, nope, none nah, of that. N- 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 You'd be like surprised, that. yo. Like I'm not surprised. Uh, <laughs> <there's some laughs> one, I yo. feel like. I feel like I one, should, man. I should mm-hmm. at times be like that, mm-hmm. but it's not in me to be like that. Where you think but, that comes from? But I don't, cause I feel like I'm just grateful for the opportunities that I'm getting. Mm-hmm. And I just look at this as a blessing, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I never, 
I, I don't know. I just always feel like you deal with people, I expect them to deal with you. You show mm. respect, you get respect back. Th that's what I was going to say. If you, if he's a diva about respect. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's yeah if you don't give him respect, thing. then that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And on every level, that could be from the person that's booking him right. to the person that's serving him food. Right. If there's respect there, then everything's cool. When yeah. it's like a disrespectful thing, well, you it's might different. see a different side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Fire. true. Yeah, that's <laughs> what's your, uh, what's your pre-show uh, ritual? Do you have anything that you do, nah. anything tequila. you work out, nah, tequila, nah, nah. I, I see, But then again, you know, it's, it's not say I, I have a drink to go on stage, but I just enjoy myself. So, right. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But right. I, I've done shows before where, yo, literally they don't have time for have a drink, so just have to go on stage. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean anything's different. Um, I mean, I feel like if I had a drink, you do get more um freestyle mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, you might get a longer oh, show jinx, yeah you might get you will get a longer show all right facts you will get you get, you're supposed to get an hour you get hour and 40 minutes that's right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. where's you piss me off now the crowd oh shit spend minutes, our 10 yeah. minutes for you <laughs> <laughs> even when we forgot about you we come back hey you remember you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> But so no. let that be a lesson to anybody who's approaching White Yachty on road, man. Just show some respect and mm -hmm. love, man. He gonna give it right back. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's uh, what's next, man? I wanted to ask. You know, you got this amazing Canadian tour that uh, seems to be very successful mm -hmm. and is happening. Uh, are you guys gonna go into another country after? Yeah. Is there? What are the plans? You guys want to take over the world? Like, what what is it? <laughs> yeah, the the plan is um basically you know America has been there for a while now to be. Mm -hmm. Um, I've done shows in America, but not properly. Mm -hmm. Like the first time we toured, we added a few American dates into it, and we went over there and did the, the only a few. I think it was like four or five we did, mm -hmm. and um, it was nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I do have a big following out there, and now what it is is we focused on Canada. You know, I live in the UK, so the UK is okay, but it's like we live, live not living here. West is here, but so we can get everything done here. Now it's is starting to concentrate on the marketing side mm. of um America because that sh the tour should be going to America next. Mm. That's the plan. Yes. Yes, I mean, mm -hmm. and then that's all it is. And next on from that is just like you know trying to secure, like I said, like a Netflix deal in some way. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whether it's TV shows, acting is something I want to do as well. I yeah, want to eh? get into acting. Let's okay, go. I, mean, I can see you. I can see you in the next season of Top Boy or something. You know? What What was the movies you've done already? <laughs> you've done a few. Um, and I was featured in um I had a cameo in Blue Story. Blue Story, yeah, yeah, yeah I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had a I feature that. in that, which was mm -hmm. dope. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I enjoyed it. And that's what I'm saying. It's like something like that is what I want to be doing more of. Because right. then it opens up you to a different who a different industry right mm -hmm. you understand what I mean? you're yeah. not just doing comedy now you're doing movies you yeah. understand expand, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, expand the brand bro yeah, exactly. yeah, what's yeah, up yeah. what what's happens up? i wanted to ask <laughs> lastly like what happens if you if let's say netflix doesn't call what are you guys more of the you know do you believe in the do-it-yourself model where you're like yo if these guys aren't going to do it we're going to shoot it ourselves and show them what it's like that's literally what's been happening every step of the way like yeah. it's just like we just started doing our own tickets. We mm. do, we've been doing our own merch for a while. We just started doing it online. Yeah, it's like the longer we wait for someone to come and say, "Hey, West and White Yardy, let's do this for you," mm -hmm. yeah. the longer it takes for them to acknowledge Yardy or myself and do that. Mm -hmm. The stronger we get in putting together. Like we basically just replace jobs that we used to do with more and more team members and step up another rung of like elevating ourselves. Love that. You know Love what I mean? That. Just amazing. Because at the end of the day, that's 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 the only choice. There's no we're not staying stagnant. Yeah. So the only choice is to to, to keep keep adding more and more skills, more and more aspects of what it is that we do. So if the streaming, we might have to build our own streaming platform <laughs> <Whatever> <laughs> we might have to stream yeah, on yeah, our yeah. own website yeah, yeah. we did we did one yeah. um, one streaming show lockdown, for yeah. uh for for during the pandemic right mm. streamed it on on a website so Fire. amazing Fire. where would the special be would it be in the uk would it be in We're canada I'll let, I'll let him talk yeah, about so that. we actually a toronto <laughs> one we're shooting here <laughs> for real <laughs> exclusive so sip, sip, this sip, sip. sunday the one we're doing in toronto we're shooting no that one way. Wow. yeah we're gonna shoot it i'm edit, pulling up it every, most definitely I'm yeah, man. Mm -hmm. and um we, we want to get it done editing and then once it's done it's like we have the package there now so it's like fire you know what I mean? There should be no no answer. There should be a, not an answer saying no. But right. we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Can't wait for bro. that, man. We'll definitely I, pull up on that one. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that for sure, man. Um, before we get out of here, man, like I was saying earlier, this is Dreams Will Have Deadlines podcast, and there's somebody watching this right now who wants to give up on their dream or they're unsure that they can keep going. Yeah. So what would you tell that person, no matter where they're at in their life, to kind of continue forward in, in their dream? So and so basic conclusion, but be real. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, when you be real with yourself, it's the best thing. Mm -hmm. Because let's be let's be honest, yeah. 
We all know somebody. No, he's looking at you right there, man. Yeah. Tell him, tell him, he's right there. <laughs> we all know somebody out there, right? We need to stop doing what they're doing. You know that person? Them soon 60 and them still a try to rap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, them still a try to rap to you about stuff that's not realistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah? You, there comes a time in your career, in your life, where you say, you know what? You've wasted too much time on this dream. Focus on the next dream. You understand? Because when you go to bed and sleep, you know, you not just have one dream, you know. You sleep how much time for your life, you get to whole heap of different dream. <laughs> wake up and use one of the other ones. You understand mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. With comedy, I would say to anybody doing comedy, be honest to yourself as well. Make sure you respect the craft of what you're getting into. Don't just feel like it's just easy there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Learn about it. Respect the people who have been in it before you as well. And you take on advice. You're never too big to take on advice. I always say, you know, like when you give advice to somebody, you can tell if they listen or they hear the advice. Do you understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if somebody takes on the advice, they're not going to take it on and give you back an answer. Mm-hmm. They're just going to take the advice and say, I got you, I hear you, what you're saying. But if you give the advice and they'll be like, yeah, 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 but, but. they didn't hear you. They're only listening to what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or they heard you, sir, I say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Facts. Hey. <laughs> hey. No, you did that on purpose, yeah, because yeah, yeah. that was a bar right there, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a coin right there, yeah. man. Well, thank you so much for coming through, bro. This has been an honor and a pleasure. Thank we you, got man. a lot of gems today. Thank I feel you. like you inspired a lot of people today, That'd man. Nice one. You know what I mean? I can't wait for the Netflix special. We're going to manifest it, whether it be now or later, man. Yeah, That's just coming for you, bro. I, I believe it 100,000%, bro. And, um,. Yo, to all my auntie and uncle them, we did it. We did it, yo. <laughs> I, I want a nice piece of turkey when yo, I come there. You know what I'm Christmas saying? Christmas nice. <laughs> yeah. When I pick for Christmas. <laughs> Thanks again, man. Thanks again, bro. Yo, well, everybody, everybody's here. We got a full cast here. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody in the building, man. And this is the Dreams Don't Have Deadlines podcast, Let's man. Let's get it, man. Yeah. And what do we always say? A dream is what you make it, but you never make it without a dream. You feel me? Hey. So we'll go out there and get it, man. This White Yardy, I'm Juice. Marwa Manami. Let's, Let's get, get it, it, man. We out of here. All right. Peace. Boom. Mm-hmm. You're so Work hard and I handle my business. Look up in the sky, whole squad. Let's get it. No limit, no. no. no.